In this video, we'll be taking apart the Doji S100. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, heat needs to be applied to the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then a pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. Now the glue or adhesive holding the screen down to the frame is extremely strong. So you need to use a lot of heat and isopropyl alcohol to help you pry the screen off. There's a single Phillips screw holding on the cover which covers the connector for the screen. Once that's removed, the flex cable for the screen can be disconnected from the main board. Here's a better look at the back of the screen. There are 10 T5 or Torx 5 screws and two Phillips screws which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the mid plate or mid frame. I don't see a vapor chamber on this phone as it's specified on their website, so I don't know if it's the case for the review unit that I have or if this will be the case for all of the phones. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. These flex cables connect the main board to the subboard. There are six Phillips screws which are holding down the battery assembly. Here's a better look at the 10,800 mAh battery, which in reality is two 5,400 mAh batteries put together. The black coaxial cable needs to be disconnected from the bottom subboard. Now in order to remove the main board, the top speaker is soldered to the main board, so you'll need to desolder the wires for that. There are five Phillips screws which are holding down the main board to the back plastic assembly. Once those have been removed, the flex cable connecting the main board to the back board needs to be disconnected. Now this plastic assembly can be lifted up and since the vibrator motor is soldered to this board, you have to carefully pry it off. Looking at the main board, there's a 32 megapixel front facing camera a proximity sensor on the top corner, and a notification LED. There's also a 3D layer of graphite which is covered in copper tape over the front shields. Once that's peeled off, we can see a thermal pad which sits on top of the processor. We can also see the SIM reader located over here. This is an extension flex cable which connects the main board to the flex cable for the screen. The front facing camera connector can be disconnected by just popping it off. Here's a better look at the 3D layer or multi-layer graphite. On the other side, we can see the 20 megapixel night vision camera, the 108 megapixel primary camera, and the 16 megapixel wide and macro camera. The camera connectors can be disconnected by popping them off. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's more 3D graphite and copper tape on the back to help transfer heat. And there's a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is a white sticker. There are numerous antenna lines drawn on this black plastic cover. And on this board, we can see the dual LED flash, as well as the infrared lights. There's also more multi-layer graphite covered in copper tape on that shield. The NFC antenna and wireless charging coil are located over here. And the flex cables for those are located here. And these are the flex cables for the buttons on this side, and the one over here for this side. Aside from the top speaker itself, there's a separate earpiece speaker, which is held in place with a cure in place gasket. The bottom speaker cables are also soldered to the subboard, so if you need to replace the subboard or charger port board, you would need to desolder these cables in addition to removing the two Phillips screws. The housing itself is made of plastic with rubber covers. 
If you needed to replace either of the buttons, there are four T5 or Torx 5 screws on either side, which would need to be removed to lift up and remove the metal plates, giving you access to those buttons. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the screen. And power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.